Ooh. <laughs> okay, so mother, you'll see a, a, a box on the screen. Is your center there? Because she has to hit the Got box, it. the blue box that says Got it. Got it. Thank you. So welcome everybody and in particular, welcome to Marianne Coconut and Annalise Jennings, all the way from Australia. And I'm so <laughs> excited that we're doing the <coughs> Valley's Jam over such a distance. So yeah. in, order, in order that people know who uh, you are, please could I just ask you to both introduce yourselves. Who we'll go first? Annalise, you, you, you. Okay. Um, hi, everybody from Australia, Cape York. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Marianne Coconut. Um, I'm a kind of elder. That's my tribal clan. And um, yeah, I'm also a member of the Napanam community. Yeah. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. My name is Annalise Jennings, and I'm a friend of the Napanam community and a tribal daughter to Marianne Coconut, and I'm completely honoured to be here today um, with you, Alan, and with Marianne. Thank you so much for the invitation. And uh, I think Marianne would like to do a welcome. Would you like to do a welcome, yes. Marianne? Okay. Yeah, it's um, on behalf of the Alnit people, the custodians of this region, I'd like to uh, welcome, acknowledge them and acknowledge you for having this uh, talk this morning and uh, with due respect I'd like to respect everyone hope our conversation will be will run smoothly and there will be no hiccups thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you Marianne and you know, the, the Values Jam card game is based on a music Values Jam. So if there are any hiccups, there might be. We just need to, we just need to embrace them and make them part of our conversation. <laughs> so this, this is the game. This is the Values Jam card deck. And what I'm going to do is ask you to help me to choose a card at random. Uh, so there are 60 cards in the deck. And um, so... Maybe to start with, Annalise, could you tell me how many times you'd like me to cut the deck? I'd like you to cut the deck six times. The number six came into my mind. Six times, <laughs> okay, good. Hmm. So I have six cuts of the deck. And Marianne, could I ask you to choose a number between one and six? One and six, I'll choose seven. Oh. <laughs> well that's not there you, go. <laughs> there you go let's cut the deck seven times oh, sorry, sorry 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 i didn't listen clearly i chose five <laughs> okay so five and do you know what i've chose that's the deck that's got the most cards in it but we've got eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen nineteen annalise so which number comes to mind now oh 17 17 okay and so wow the card we've chosen marianne we've chosen the card patience and okay. the way this works is that we have a number of questions on the back of the card you don't need to see what they are but we always start with a question we always finish with a specific question and in between times we'll see where we go but the first question is this, what does patience mean? What does it look, feel, sound like? So in your own time, 
either of you, when you're ready, please share. Patience. I believe that patience is about controlling yourself and um, speaking when speak when you should and not um, go faster than anybody else, but give your opinion but don't um, overstep someone else, just to wait patiently for your turn to talk. Yeah, what about you, Annalisa? Any of that kind of resonate with you or do you have anything additional to add? Yeah, as I hear Marianne talk about patience, I'm reminded of respect. I'm reminded of, uh, uh, you know that we are that we all have a voice, and that everybody's voice is respected and honoured. And I believe that's a really important element when we come together in the spirit of community. That uh, that we all feel heard, and mm -hmm. and as Mary Ann says, nobody speaks over the top of anybody. There's always enough time. There's always enough space. Uh, to create that listening and that patience. And, and with that comes a strong faith that whatever the conversation is that needs to emerge is the perfect conversation in that moment. And, and that's something that Mary Ann really taught me over, over several years of, of living and working side by side. Yeah, and some of those words that you've just mentioned there in terms of like respect and faith, I think for me, patience is about not being in too much of a hurry, right? So in, in life and in the world generally, it does seem to be that we operate at real pace a lot of the time. And patience is about kind of resisting that and saying, let's just operate at a speed that is right rather than feel pressed. Um, and Mariam, what about what what does patience look like, feel like, sound like? It came in my mind that um, a lot of our people are on the fast track and that's why Sometimes they don't uh, hold it, they try and stop for a while and think and listen. Because it's best sometimes to listen to other people and show the respect instead of moving on the fast lane, but to go on your own pace. Mm. No, the, as you know, the, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, when we ran Women of Worth at Mangali Falls and, and Mary Ann and I went away with 17 other women from Napranam and it was a really beautiful time to gather around the fireplace. We created <laughs> a very smoky fireplace in the middle of this massive shed while the storms were hurling around us. There was so much rain and and and. Mary Ann said that the rain was a cleansing from the spirits and from the gods. And I remember us sitting around the fireplace and Mary Ann leading the conversation and uh, to simply be together. So when I think about patience and respect, I also think about connection. And there's a, a beautiful, uh, you know, process, connection before content. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, without connection uh, and relatedness, uh, it's difficult to move on to the next dialogue. And so to just be present and to be with one another. And we had many moments of that in community. 
uh, we had many moments of um, sitting around the fireplace, but also, Mary Ann, do you remember stone soup? Yes. Yes. <laughs> And stone soup was another way. And actually, we did that in Toronto, Ellen, when we opened our conversation. If you remember, I was looking for rocks yep. in very early in the morning and you spotted me in my pyjamas. I do remember that very quite vividly. But stone soup is also a metaphor for coming together in community and, uh, and to simply be together and connect. And that also takes a lot of patience because it means... Sometimes we've just got to leave our agendas at the back door and come together in a conversation about what is it that we're here to create together. Yeah. And, and let the process emerge from there. So it's with great faith because we just don't know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah, the, the, the first uh, of this guest session series was with Richard Barrett. Um, yeah. We were, who, who you know very well, um, and we were talking about the known and the unknown. And mm. I was saying to Richard that I, I kind of intuitively, I feel that the known represents a pretty small percentage of what is compared mm. to the unknown. And I, I said to him, I, I'm, I'm thinking that it's, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15%. And Richard said, no, 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 it's far less, it's far less. <laughs> <laughs> the, the known is probably about 2% of, of what is. And, and yet in society, everybody or many people seem to be focused on making the decisions based on the known. And yet if it's such a small percentage, why would we do that rather than embrace the unknown? Yeah, and, and, you know, one of the concepts that Mary and I, Mary Ann and I worked with a lot when we uh, worked, you know, when we looked at, you know, pulling together uh, ideas for NAPRONIM's, you know, visionary plan, it wasn't just Mary Ann and I, the whole community took place in so many dialogues and, and of course, you know, Roy Shepperton, who's, you know, couldn't be with us today and all of the councillors and members of the community. And one of the concepts was how do we shift from the problem to the possibility? Mm -hmm. And so we're often focused on looking at community as a problem to be solved. But actually the community is not a problem to be solved. The community is full of, of, of people and, uh, and spirit of contribution that we can make every single day. And so to focus on the possibility also requires a lot of patience because we don't know what the possibilities are. Exactly. And yet an entire visionary plan emerged as a result of focusing on what's the hope, what's the possibility, and let's be patient in that conversation and see what emerges. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw magic emerge. You know, we saw a visionary plan. We saw the ripple effect. Uh, that really started to take shape across the community. Yeah. And Marianne, you, you mentioned uh, the importance of listening a little while ago. And I, I think that that is so underestimated because, again, society presses us to say something. You know, it's like you're in a meeting, say something, make a contribution. Whereas... <laughs> listening actually can give you so much more from that event, that conversation. And people, I think, shouldn't feel that just because they're not making a verbal contribution, they're not gaining anything from it. Because those people that are listening more sometimes take more away from the conversation than those people that are talking. Yes. Mm. And so let's move on to another question. Um, so I'm gonna choose one of the, the, the next series of questions and I'm gonna ask, when have you experienced patience? <laughs> oh gosh, I think Mary Ann, you can, you can read a whole book on that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I experienced that when uh, my own children and other people in the community um, is angry and they are loud. Uh, that there's a way that you get to have control with yourself and um, try and control your feelings instead of trying to talk over this person, but to control your own feelings and try and, you know, listen to this other person because you are trying to be patient while this person is very loud, trying to talk if this person is angry. So they, it's, it's very hard to control yourself, but that is the time when you try, you fight hard to control yourself and you, you know, hold your tongue, not to say anything while this person is angry. And I think with that, a lot of times you can be a winner because you somehow calm this other person. Yeah. Because of your patience. Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Annalise? <clears throat> yeah, I I feel patience is an act of love. <laughs> and it's an act of reserving judgment. Yeah. And and so in 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 knowing when to say nothing, as Mary Ann says, and just holding our place and being very present to what's happening for the other person, I, I feel is an act of love to give them space and time to let go of whatever it is is happening for them. And, and it's, it's hard. <laughs> I think it's really hard to do. And uh, personally, I, I don't feel I'm masterful at that, but I... I I remain an open, eternal learner <laughs> <laughs> and stay committed to it. But it's, it's not an easy space when you're in the middle of chaos. Yeah, and, when, something uh, needs, when something needs to be done, do you mean? Yes, and, and, and I so agree and uh, respect what Mary Ann is saying that you know, in the, it, sometimes it's in the silence that you deliver your greatest message. And, um, you know, I experienced that the first time I met Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember being in the council chambers at Napranam where the Mayor Roy Shepperton had invited me to come and speak with the councillors and, and just share some thoughts and hear their thoughts about the bringing together of a visionary plan. And so I was there and I was very nervous and a little bit anxious and wondering, you know, I wonder what's going to happen here today. And I remember Mary Ann walking into the uh, council chambers and she was very quiet. And with her presence and her silence, for me, she exuded just so much grace and power. And she only said a few words, but that was enough to really connect us. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's, you know, that was in, gosh, when was that? That in 2011, that was in 2011. And our bond is uh, quite unshakable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that, that demonstration of patience and grace. Mm -hmm. And that actually, um, I don't know why I'm thinking this, Annalise, but do you have you surfed or do you surf? <laughs> it's funny you should say that. The answer is no. I do try to get up on my paddleboard and do stand up paddleboarding. Okay. So I, I do that and I fall very ungracefully uh, <laughs> again and again. And I keep getting back on that paddleboard and I'm just determined. <laughs> 
All right. The water is sometimes really choppy and uh, bounces me around a bit, which doesn't help, but I keep getting back up again and trying. So <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's funny it, you should ask that because I spent the last week doing it every <laughs> single day. <laughs> well, it might seem like a very random question, but and I haven't surfed for many years, but I used to try and like a bit like you, not particularly successfully. But the reason that it, I think it's coming to my mind is that you, you were just talking there about how when there's chaos or everything's happening around you, it can be difficult to demonstrate patience. And I found when I was out waiting for a wave with the surfboard, that that was a really brilliant lesson in patience because when you see a wave coming, you kind of don't know whether it's going to turn into the wave or not. You make a decision whether to go with it or not. Sometimes you might be right and other times you might be wrong. And whatever happens, you just go out there and wait for the next one. <laughs> and I, I think that, that that lesson has served me really well in a number of situations where I kind of, I, I've kind of taught myself not to think that I'm in so much control anymore. I just, you know, whatever happens will happen. And then you just need to make some choices about what you do next. And that's it. Quite simple. And I think to have an intention and, and let that intention guide you yeah. is, is, uh, is an, well, for me, it's an important part of my own growth. But I'm going to ask Mary Ann to share a metaphor that she shared with me when there were many times that I just, I felt really overwhelmed in, in working in community and, and wondering if I could really help to make a difference. And Marianne shared a metaphor, life is like a rose. And I wonder, Marianne, if you would be happy to share that metaphor with us. Okay. <coughs> well, <coughs> working in the community with the, the people, and um, confronting family violence. It's been a struggle. You don't know where you're going or what's gonna happen. But when we thought of a logo, we thought about a rose. We, we, we said, the rose is a beautiful flower. But before you get to the flower, there's this stem with the thorns. And we believe the struggles and the hurts that we have in life is the thorns that hurt us. But there is always hope at the end of the stem with this beautiful rose. So we, be all, we always believe in hope. When we make choices, we make the right choices in our life. Oh, that's that's lovely. And it, again, it can, I think there's a recurring theme here, this thing about not being in too much of a rush. And, you know, okay, if you get a thorn, okay, that's a thorn. But then yeah. there still might be a rose, so keep going. And that's the, the yep. whole patience thing, right? It's patience and faith. Mary Ann shared that metaphor with me back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I use it in many of my coaching dialogues. And it's very present for me. It's very strong. It's a, it's a powerful metaphor to help me to take the next step and the next step and continue to keep my eye on you know, what is the intention here that's waiting to emerge? And again, the shift from problem to possibility uh, in, in, in being committed to creating spaces of connection and belonging. So that metaphor has served me uh, many, many times over. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, it's, it's so... I can see it. I can see the picture of a beautiful rose with those 
really spiky thorns on the stem. So that's going <laughs> to take with, with me a long time too. So let's go, let's go really big now. So the, the next question is, how could more patients improve the world? If we have more people that will listen, getting together with a group of people and respecting each other's opinion mm. and to let someone speak out and get out how they feel, how they are feeling, because the feelings all comes from the inside of us. Not just lip service, but it's real. It's coming from the inside. And you helping someone in the group to be patient, to listen and be patient. There is a time for speak, when, and there is a time to be patient. Thank you, Marianne. What are you thinking, Annalise? Well, I'm thinking of the ripple effect. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, when. Uh, when there's that place of patience uh, and people feel heard, uh, the ripple effect is um, the ripple effect again, it's a place of faith. And we can never really know what the outcome is going to be when we drop that pebble in the pond, mm -hmm. that pebble of patience and the impact that that has on the people around us and out to our community and then out to humanity. And yes, you know, certainly with world events as they are right now, if we can be in a place of patience and faith and listening, you know, I wonder what the manifestation of that could be. Yeah, and what's coming through for me is something around the level of understanding that can be achieved with patience rather than this kind of superficial understanding that might be achieved if you're in a rush. So, you know, if, if you think about questions, for instance, I had a really beautiful conversation just last week about how when there's a question, there's some sort of urgency about finding the answer. Everybody's obsessed with the answer to the question. But actually, perhaps the question could lead to other questions and how much more interesting that would be so that you understand the depth rather than this kind of surface layer. And you can only do that with patience. I, I agree with you. Our wisdom lies in the questions that we have and not in the answers that we pretend to have. <laughs> <laughs> and and I really like that I like that as an intention that you know we ask ourselves a question every day and just just allow it to shape itself in whatever way it needs to mm. again I keep coming back to the word faith mm -hmm. as the leveler for patience and Marianne if you think about the the world then if you imagine a world where there is more patience what what do you think could be the benefit of that? Well, I would think that you would speak when you want to talk because you can't be patient all the time. There are times when you have to speak out what's within you. If you want to be, want to make the difference, let you be the difference in your community. 
Yeah, I think that's a that's a great point because like you've just said, you know, if we if you've got an emergency situation, that's not the time for patience, right? You just need to take control, make a decision and get on with it. Um, so yeah, in these conversations, sometimes we we kind of almost get carried away by the word and assume that it's applicable in all circumstances. But of course, that's not the case. Annalise, I'm sure in your work, you've, you've come across situations where there's not the time for patience. No, but there's something that Mary Ann just said that really evokes something in me. And she said, if you want to make a difference, be the difference. Mm -hmm. And so this is the shift from doing to being. And when we think about you know, what it means to really come together in the spirit of community, then, you know, we're reminded of the principles of creating spaces of belonging, creating spaces of connection, caring for the well-being of the whole, shifting our perspective from the problem to the possibility. All of these elements require patience, but it also, but they are also ways of being. They're ways of how we show up in the world. And so, you know, I, I listen really deeply to everything that Mary <laughs> says because there's, for me, there's always such a, 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 a reservoir of, of, uh, of um, grace and wisdom. And so that's what, if, that's what has been evoked in me as I, as I hear Mary Ann share. <laughs> Uh, but coming back to your question or to your, your sentiment, you know, there are moments when, you know, I have to speak up quickly and there's, you know, there's an urgency. I feel that comes back to being really clear uh, about who I am and what I stand for. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's always very, very present. And so, again, it's not easy and we're, you know, we're often triggered or I'm often, you know, my emotional triggers you know, flare up. Uh, and so to remind myself in this moment right here, right now, this is the moment to speak up and to come from that place of this is who I am, this is what I stand for and to be grounded in the message that I need to deliver, I feel is really important. And, you know, as facilitators, we're in front of groups all the time. And it's live, you know, you don't have the benefit of a recording that you can edit, you know, so it's live, it's happening and it's happening right here, it's happening right now. And sometimes we're, you know, we're, we're confronted with something that is really significant. So we have to know when to listen and take a step back and we have to know when to feel grounded in ourselves to say, this is what is evoked in me right now. This is how it's showing up for me right now. Sometimes you've just really got to do it there in the moment. But wow, if you, unless you come from that place of this is who I am, this is what I stand for, it can go incredibly pear-shaped <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> So I've had many of those moments too. So you've really got to take a breath. <laughs> but I, 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 can relate to, I can relate to what you've just talked to there, Annalise, because it seems to me that if you just trust that what you feel is the right way, rather than that you ought to know or there is a way that should be, it usually works out fine. And it's this thing about, like, like you say, being grounded in yourself somehow finds the way. And you might not know how that happens, but it does. And it, so the, the next question, actually, I'm going to invite you both. And again, if, if, this, if nothing comes to mind, then that's absolutely fine, too. Um, but I'm going to invite you to ask your own question about patience, beginning with who, what, where, when, why, or how. 
So if a question about patients comes to you, let's hear it. Mm. Who are you talking to? You don't really know people. It's just like uncharted waters where you don't know who you are meeting. So you have to be careful whatever words you use because sometimes someone in the crowd may be uncomfortable about something, whatever. It might be in their heart. So at this moment, it's a spare of a moment when you have to have the right words to speak to the crowd and give them your opinion. Because like I say, it's like uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you face. Yeah, that's so true. And it, again, it's this thing around we we think we know so much more than we do. So, like you say, Marianne, when you when you're speaking with people, you might convince yourself you know who they are, but you don't really know who they are. And it's that um, it's that curiosity and patience and willingness to explore and be interested to find out rather than you know convince yourself that you know this person especially in a especially in a, a business situation you know how often do people have this kind of corporate face on that they're playing the role of and you don't you don't know them Annalisa, I um, I worked with some uh, some people across Europe, um, and this was just after COVID started. And so they set up a series of Zoom meetings. There was about twelve of them, and in one of the early meetings, uh, you've just reminded me of this actually. This conversation, they were saying that they felt that they knew each other better within a very short period of time having had these Zoom calls than they had known each other when they were in the workplace because they had seen, you know, the, the home in the background. Uh, they were in their own environment, so they were more relaxed and they were more themselves. And I remember one of them said, I hope we're going to be able to retain this. And I just said to them, well, who's going to decide? whether you retain it or not. <laughs> and they were like, well, is that for us? Yeah, of course it's for you. <laughs> Who else is going to decide? <laughs> so, yeah, Marianne, that's a, that, I think that question about who are you talking to is, yeah, how often do we think we're talking to somebody that we're not? Anything to add there, Annalise? Uh, when I be patients, I can be more present to helping to shape a more connected humanity in whatever way that shows up and manifests. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we're going to come now to the final question. And the final question is, what are you encouraged to do differently about patience as a result of our conversation today? Uh, 
if, if, if this is the final question, I'd like Marianne to have the final word. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go next and then I'm going to defer to, to Marianne to have the final, final word. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so what I will do differently as a result of today is have faith uh, in it's been a roller coaster months and to continue to be present to patients and to have faith that what is happening right now is perfect and to allow it to shape and evolve itself however it's meant to is my commitment to myself and I'm declaring that in front of the two of you and however many people are going to see this recording. <laughs> well, so, so that we can meet your request that uh, Marianne goes last, has the final word, I'll jump in here. And I, this might sound like a bit of a cheat <laughs> because mine is very similar to yours, Annalise. I, as as we were thinking about that question, I was thinking, I'm, I'm just gonna to continue to practice not being rushed and not feeling that sense of urgency to get something done. Because at the end of the day, whether it gets done now or it gets done later, in the round, most of the time, it really doesn't matter. And it would be better for it to be done at the right time rather than in short time. So I'm, I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to be consciously practicing patience all day. And Marianne, the final word. Okay. I hope it will help someone, but I believe that um, it's not about me, you, it's about us when you are helping other people. And it, it's sort, it's, uh, it's about accepting faith and trust that you have helped someone, you listen to someone because of your patience. And the main thing is trust and faith and accept what someone else is talking about maybe you planted a seed there mm -hmm. a seed that one day it will grow and be a fruit thank you marianne might might even turn into a rose <laughs> <laughs> so marianne coconut and annalise jennings it's been such a joy to Values Jam on the value of patience. Uh, thank you so much for joining from the other side of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank An honour. Thank, thank you. Bye. <laughs>